Hi folks, Pastor Mike Spalding here with my good friend and big brother. I am Pastor Casper, and we're here together to encourage you to keep listening to Deception Detection Radio, because we're both on this network with our individual shows. Yes, and yes. And we're going to be doing some things together as well, and I'll just not just say them all. Hey folks, tune in Deception Detection Radio, some of the best programming in Christian talk, news, encouragement, and Bible studies. God bless you. God bless Sinners that transforms us into saints And I'm so in love with you For what you've done for me Here I am to worship you Without any restraint You're the only way, the truth and life That makes me You're listening to Spiritual Encounters with Pastor Casper McLeod. And now, here's your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper. Welcome to another Spiritual Encounter, and I am your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper, here along with my dear friend and co-host, Pastor Brandon Gallops, and our producer hiding behind the scenes, Barry Richard. So don't touch that dial because we're going to get into it now. Um, We're here because we want to tune in to the Holy Spirit. We don't want to tune into Radio Devil any longer in our life. And we're just finding out how much Jesus truly loves you. Helps us understand how much he loves everybody else, even those people that really frustrate you. So there's all kinds of stuff happening, you know, plans behind the scenes, building the Third Temple, which a lot of... um, Christians even don't understand the significance of what's happening right here. And, um, you know, this is setting the stage for the Antichrist, uh, which could happen within you know, the next couple of years here. So we've got dangerous experiments happening with the CERN and D-waves and nanobots and artificial intelligence uh, invading society and, and, and reality as never before, neural lace. Uh, transhumanism, people are asking us, you know, what is that? What is transhumanism? Um, I did write about that in my book, Unmask in the Future, so I'd encourage people to check it out. So, you know, the secret societies, the harp chemtrails, extraterrestrials, abductions, the, this phenomenon, it goes on and on and on, right? The breeding programs, Nephilim. Uh, where do we begin? I want to talk about um, today, let's talk about inner healing, because it's there's an occultic um, substance, that, it, 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 a way, a method, a, a modality, like theophorsic. It's crept into the churches today, and, and a lot of them, you know, you can see sign. We, 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 we offer inner healing. Mm-hmm. Do you feel peace? Do you feel happiness? <laughs> Pastor Brandon, you're, you're in the cotton edge of this stuff in your, your program in the, with Redeemed Ministries. I mean, we're seeing people... They're not getting free when they come out of this, these, um, these inner healings. It means a lot of things to a lot of people. I'm, I'm not against inner healing. People need their inside healed as well as the outside. So um, what is your take on this? Yeah. Well, and, and listen, let me just say uh, as well as you just did, um, we do need inner healing because we all have a heart condition, right? We all have a sin condition in our life. And ultimately, until we heal that, then... Here we are. We're stuck in this vicious circle of whatever controls us, uh, you know, and for, for the majority of the people I deal with, that's substance abuse, whether that be alcohol, uh, you know, drugs, street drugs, prescription drugs, pornography, um, something controls us. Uh, and, and so, you know, here's something that I'll often tell men as I'm talking to them, maybe in their first interview with me or or as soon as they get to the program, I'll say something like this. I I'll just simply tell them, listen, drugs isn't your problem. Uh, You know, heroin isn't your problem. Meth isn't your problem. Alcohol isn't your problem. And I kind of get a funny look. Uh, And then I'll just simply tell them this. The problem is that somewhere along the way, there's something that has happened in your life that made it not okay to be you. And so the way that you are dealing with that uh, issue 
is you're masking it. You have the, the enemy has created a substance. Uh, talk to anybody that, that uses drugs. And, and if they're honest, they'll they'll immediately begin to tell you how it takes it all away. It makes it OK to be them. Uh, they don't have to deal with the issues of life. They don't have to deal with the hurts and pains and disappointments. So that person truly needs inner healing. Yes, but not in some, uh, you know, weird ritualistic uh, peace, love, joy and happiness kind of way. Um, they need a relationship with Jesus Christ and they need to dig up that root issue, that root problem, whatever that may be, um, whether it be some type of abuse or abandonment, a broken relationship with their earthly father. Uh, you know, whatever the issue is, they, they've got to dig that up and they've got to deal with it in a godly biblical manner. Um, and so many times here on this program, it comes down to this and, and I'm just going to say it again, it comes down to forgiveness. We're holding on to bitterness and anger and rage and, and, and disappointments and hurts. And we're not forgiving those people and those situations that have caused that inside of us. Therefore, the turmoil, therefore, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, all those emotions that stem from that. And so the godly biblical way for inner healing comes through forgiveness. Uh, Matthew chapter six, Jesus says, you know, if you forgive those who have harmed you then, or who have sinned against you, then you will be forgiven by your heavenly father. But if you do not, then your heavenly father will not, or some versions say cannot forgive you. Uh, Matthew 18 uh, you know, Jesus repeats that same scenario through the telling of a parable. Uh, and, and so, you know, it's the scriptures are very clear that when we're harboring that unforgiveness, it does something on the inside of us. And so, listen, I'm all for inner healing, but I'm, I'm, I'm for it in a biblical Jesus relationship with Jesus centered manner. Amen. Uh, he wants to heal all of us, uh, as he tells us in, in Thessalonians uh, 5, uh, 23. The, the, the be holy, W H O L L Y, and, and all the peace, all all, the, all of it coming together. And in fact, it tells us, you know, the Lord will always honor His word. Uh, we begin to understand this as believers. The signs and wonders, healings and miracles are going to follow us as we follow Him. Uh, I'm reminded of Jeremiah uh, chapter one, tw uh, verse twelve says, "Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. I, I will hasten my word." To perform it, I mean, he's he's watching over it and, and the things that. That's why we're accountable for every idle word we speak. Um, God's going to honor His word in our life. Um, the Holy Word of God is truly what we ought to be concerned about in every area of our life. Um, Isaiah fifty-five tells us, you know, His word will go forth out of our mouth and won't return void. Um, it's going to prosper. It's going to it's going to go where He sends it. So anything that you think about uh, as a true born again believer that doesn't match uh, what God has actually said or how he thinks about it or how he sees it. it it's simply a form of insanity today. Um, so why keep doing the same things over and over and over again, expecting different results um, that, you know, are not of God. And yet, you know, people are doing this. You know, why keep entertaining that spirit of fear or that, sp uh, you know, fear of the future or going over and over again, how you, you don't want to, you know, release somebody from unforgiveness or bitterness because they've done you wrong. Um, that's insane. Yeah. And, and I would make this point. I would make this point too, brother, that anybody that promises you, well, listen, you're going to get this uh, uh, inner healing and, and, and for this, and, and it's going to just bring you peace and joy and happiness. And that's, and, and you're just going to have that from now on. That's a lie. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Um, uh, our, our pastor here at Redeem Ministries, our, our, our senior pastor and founder, Pastor Chris Gordon, he says it from the pulpit all the time. He says, here's the truth. All hell is going to break, break loose in your life with or without God, with or without him. You're going to walk through tough times. You're going to have things happen. You're going to have disappointments. So we get to make a decision. Are we going to try to fight those battles on our own? Or are we going to do that in a biblical, godly manner with God on our side, going ahead of us, fighting our battles for us, fighting our battles with us, like we see so many times, even in a physical manner in the Old Testament? And, and so, you know, I would just tell people, be very weary of anyone that promises you, if you if you take these steps, you're going to have nothing but peace. Man, man this is called life. And, and this life is full of disappointments. It's full of, of uh, it's full of problems. 
Uh, and I'm not a naysayer, man. You you know me, brother. I'm a happy person, man. You see me without a smile on my face and something really bad is going on. <laughs> and and But it's just the truth that we're going to have letdowns in this life. And, and typically those letdowns come from the ones that are closest to us, from the ones that we love the most. That's why they hurt so bad. Uh, but that's also why we must forgive and we must move on. And we must forgive from the heart, which is what Matthew 18 says. Amen. Well, here's the thing. You know, we're going to keep moving forward uh, towards the glorious light of Christ. Um, you know, entertaining any of the stuff that's on the holy, again, it's a form of insanity. Anything that falls short of the glory of God um, is mindset. I mean, 2 Timothy 1.7, you, know, you all know this probably. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love in his mind. What is this love? What is this agape love that we're given? The Holy Scriptures tell us of our Heavenly Father is love. Um, so what does that sound mind come from? It comes from having the Word of God within us. And um, you get into the Holy Word of God, the Holy Word of God gets into you. you know, John 14 and 26 tells us about the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. He'll send, you know, and he'll teach us all things that he said, everything we need to know, because all things are possible with God. Um, it tells us to, to be praying. Um, sometimes we don't even know how to pray. And, and, and with groanings, you know, we could intercede. Uh, the, the, the Lord is going to make the prayer language. Um, Ephesians talking about praying always in the, uh, with supplication in the Spirit, um, watching therefore the all perseverance, the supplication for all the saints. Uh, Jude one twenty, uh, but beloved, uh, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So this is something we need to, to do, especially in these days. Um, when we've got all sorts of wacky stuff going on, we need to be putting on that mind of Christ. And uh, besides, how can worrying about anything add one inch to your life? Right? Yeah. So it doesn't do anything. It's like it's like I mean, I'm an equestrian, right? So worry to me is like getting on a rocking horse, and I don't go anywhere. I just rock back and forth in it, right? Um, but we we think about this. You know, the, where, what is it today? I mean, the spirit of fear, uh, anxiety, stress. We talk about that at the Chain Breakers conferences that we do. We, we explain how that works. And, um, you know, it, again, it, 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 all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Um, people will come up to us and say, well, I don't believe the Bible was written by man. No, it was written by, you know, inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So I don't know what spirit wrote what you believe, but we believe the Word of God because the Holy Spirit was there to write it. Um, but I can feel that we address these things like the New Agers, they're visualizing stuff, right? It's all about visualization. And and so the church has kind of thrown out that idea. But that's not, I mean, God's the one that gave us the, the, the ability to do that. And it's a good thing. Um, I think today that the church is, is being attacked uh, from within and without, I mean, it's 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 we are it's like a D-Day thing happening. We're we're seeing all this coming to a head. I mean, on you know, look what's going on prophetically in the world stage. And then in the midst of it, we got churches that are not preaching the word of God today. Um, there's this Greek word, zoso, which means salvation. Um, you can see it on a Led Zeppelin album, right? Um, zoso. So, it, but it means that making one whole, um, complete, spiritually, mentally, physically, and it's one of those words that people like to debate in theological circles. So, let's, here's the thing. There was a man named Jack um, Sanford. J John, and it was John, John A. Sanford. Um, he, he was about 76. He passed away in 2005. He was an American Jungian psychoanalyst and an Episcopal priest. Well, that should be a red flag for you right there, talking about mixing truth with airs. So now we got churches with professional Christian counselors practicing this thing they term inner healing. Um, and so often it's based on, on theophostics and all these theories and all these practices. Nearly every one of them can be traced back uh, to this occultic beginning. It's, it's rooted in occultism like Carl Jung. Um, and his, you know, cohort Sanford there was used and manifested this stuff. So dealing up there, they're, they're talking about the unconscious mind and um, the collective unconscious, uh, um, the repressed memories, and you know, you know, they explore all that stuff for a hefty hourly fee. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's it's amazing, brother, how many people 
that I talk to in ministry just in com- just in conversation and 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 they'll you know um, th- that I'm counseling with and they will make a statement like this something along these lines um, you, you know I never have done uh, I, I've tried to dig these memories up there's things I've suppressed I don't know they're there and uh, and I've been considering doing hypnosis it, it, I mean these are believers you know but they've been told by somewhere some somebody along the line. Well, listen, like you just said, we, we can put you into a, a state of hypnosis where we get in touch with the unconscious mind and we can reveal those things. Well, maybe, you know, but what else is going to be revealed? What's going to be manifested there that's not true? What, what's going to be able to creep in and, 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 and bring, you know, some false things into your life? What doorways are we opening by do, doing that? Um, listen, all we need is the spirit of a living God inside of us. If there are truly things that happen to us, uh, you know, that, that, that are suppressed and, 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 and we don't know that they're there, <laughs> glory to God. Maybe there's a reason we don't know that they're there. Maybe God is protecting us from something, you know, um, and, and the things, let's just deal with the things we do know were there and let's see what God does from there. Let's deal with, let's start up here and work our way down. Uh, you know, I mean, we're not going to, we didn't get here in a day. Uh, all of our problems in life didn't develop in one day. We're not going to solve them all in one day. It's like an onion, you know. We have to peel it back one layer at a time. And so, uh, it, you know, it just astounds me the number of people uh, that I'll talk to. Like, say, believers, man, that'll, that'll, uh, they, they either have already done hypnosis um, or they're considering it. And, and that's crazy. That's, that's, that, that's crazy talk for a believer. It's it his. On the... Uh... You know, the Lord Jesus simplified it. He said they had a broken heart. Yes. And then when we go to chain breaker conferences, we deal with that issue. And we've seen loads of people get free. In fact, I had to deal with people that have been in therapy that come to the church. You know, they've seen a therapist for 30 years. It it took us like 30 minutes to get them free. Um, (laughs) You know, only the Lord Jesus could properly mend the broken heart. And, and nothing else is going to take the place of, of that kind of healing that the, the Lord can do. Um, and if you look on the Internet today, um, you'll see pages and pages and pages of ministries that, you know, they help, help you heal your memories. Um, this should be a big red flag, redder than my coat. The red coats are coming. Um, so They're here. Yeah, they're here. <laughs> so, I mean, no one needed their memories healed until it became popular, like in the last generation. Whoever, there's no references in the, in the scriptures. Well, we needed our memories healed. Where did that yeah. come from? We've never seen that in the scriptures. Someone needing their memory healed. We see learning to take your, your thoughts captive, the obedience uh-huh. of Christ, 2 uh, Corinthians 10 5. So the word of God hasn't changed. It, it, it's going to change you for the better. We need to be preaching, sharing Christ's love. Preaching the gospel, healing the sick, casting all demons in the Almighty name of Jesus. That's what the church is supposed to be doing. And if your church isn't doing that, then run from that place. Yeah, hey, Pastor Casper, could you just give a, a a two or three minute explanation for somebody that may be watching and may have no idea uh, when you use the word theophostics, what's what that means? Could you just e- explain that for someone that maybe has never heard that term before? In Theophostics, I mean, I, I think, let me just start with this. I mean, it's like anything, um, fire. Fire can cook your meals, you know, keep your home warm, or can burn the house down, right? So it's a serious concern. I've got very serious concerns about the, the doctrinal and scientific apl- applications of this inner healing models when people are practicing theophostics. And I've dealt with this for, for years now with people. And some of the initial investigation into this um, process indicates that, you know, these, there's, there's various ministry models of it. And, and all of them have the person receiving ministry to recall the fear, to recall the trauma that they experienced in the past. And then they use some kind of guided imagery, plus some Christian sounding prayers uh, in, in the end. Um, it appears to me they're simply using a common form of hypnosis, as you said earlier. It's, it, it comes down to hypnosis. That is not a good thing for anyone to be doing. And um, if not, I mean, it's a secular psychotherapy models, uh, you know, brainwave healing. Um, they put a Christian banner over it to, to disguise it a, a bit. Listen, it tells us in 1 John 
um, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they be of God, because many false prophets have gone on in the world. Now, we recall um, uh, some research uh, years ago at like the University of New York, um, they, they did, you know, stuff on, on fear and trauma recall. Um, and so there wasn't a proper time for resolution. Uh, they found the protein synthesis factor along with um, long-term memory produces something called cerebral amnesia. You would call it blocked memory. Oh, I, gotta, I, can't, I can't remember. I just can't. This is a real um, big block to, to helping someone get healed. So the, the sort of uh, amnesia can be produced by, um, then they'll mess around with, with electroshock therapy. That sounds pretty dangerous. Um, by certain protein synthesis that, that are inhibiting, the, uh, like an inhibiting drug, or the, in the case of um, all the theta brainwave healers, they're activating phantom DNA strands. So the phantom DNA strands, um, for the most part, they, they act, they appear probably, I, I, look, let's just tell it what it is. They're probably evil spirits. They act like an evil spirit. They behave like evil spirits. And the damage they do is what you expect an evil spirit to do. So they'll, like, they'll appear as someone's um, guardian angel uh, or some dead relative to come, you know, as a spirit guide. Like Carl Jung's experiment, you know, uh, he, he experienced that. He he taught that everything he learned about modern psychology, he learned from his spirit guide, Philemon. And then he channeled a couple more spirits, animus and animus, you know, um, talking about uh, if you wanted to be a better male, you need to get in touch with your female side. If you're female, you got to get in touch with your male side. Hey, the Word of God says he made them men and women. He didn't make them combinations. So let's just deal with that one straight away. Um, so he, he, this is what's going on in, in the psychological you know, circles. So people think they're being guided by God when they, they get into the theophilistic. They think, oh, Jesus is guiding the Holy Spirit. In fact, it's an enemy masquerading in this, this therapy session. So now we got Christians and we got secular counselors who practice this form of occultism. Uh, they claim that a person is immediately healed from the past traumas and, and, and victimization issues that they had suffered from. And, and they, you know, they, they think that we've got conclusive proof. No, they haven't got conclusive proof. However, the cerebral amnesia has occurred. Then the person is not healed at all. And, and so, in fact, the situation has actually been made much worse. Yes. It's now they've got a spirit of fear and all those issues with the past trauma are not blocked from their consciousness. So let's recognize what's going on here. And, you know, warn the church before yeah. it's too late. Yeah. And, and so, look, I think that's one thing that we so often miss is is how the enemy operates. You know, how does Satan operate? So, you know, we have this idea that everything from Satan and every tactic he he has um, is something evil, that it produces something evil within us, that it causes something evil, it causes something disastrous. And we forget that the scriptures say that Satan masquerades as what? As an angel of light. Okay, so here's where I'm going with this. I have no problem believing that a person could go through this type of, of, of voodoo counseling, for lack of a better word, and receive peace in the moment. Satan will absolutely allow you to be at peace. I believe he can absolutely produce a peace inside of you in that moment. But what I also know and believe to be true is that he will allow that to happen so that at the at like the scripture says, he left Jesus for what? For a more opportune time mm. so that when that opportune time comes along, now he's got a doorway. Now he's got a hook. Now he's got a way access, a direct access in to like you just said, cause mer more turmoil more strife, more pain, more fear than you ever had to begin with. We see this with depression medication, with, with uh, antipsychotic drugs. Listen, let's just be honest. They work in the beginning. They work. A person suffering with severe depression, anxiety, uh, uh, anxiety attacks, um, all of those type of things, they, get, they go to their psychologist, to their doctor, whatever, psychiatrist, their doctor, they put them on this pill, and it stops for a period of time. It does. I would be lying if I told you anything different. 
But then what happens? Then all of a sudden it's back with a vengeance. Now the medicine's not working. Now we've been led to believe that the medicine is what made it better. So what do we do? We're all the more willing to go back to the doctor and say, I need a higher dosage of medication. I need a different medication. I need more medications. Now I'm on three, four, five, six, eight, ten antipsychotics. And all it's doing is masking a problem, temporarily masking and giving the enemy more and more of a foothold every single time. If you want to take a pill, take the GOS pill. It's free and all the side effects are beneficial. Yeah. Listen, let's recognize what's really happening here because we're aware that, you know, sadly these things are, this has infiltrated the churches today. Uh, if someone's got past trauma, um, simply block the, the consciousness. Is that, is that the answer? Well, how could that work? I mean, what do you think these evil spirits are actually doing here? Um, they, now they bring people to, into a deeper level of torment with no resolution. And, um, you know, whatever the enemy's doing, God's always going to outmaneuver. And people sadly received all sorts of wacky therapies over the years. I mean, maybe you think back to the 50s, doctors were all promoting cigarettes, right? Um, they all smoke candles, right? Uh, <laughs> Calms our nerves, right? I mean, think about that. So, um, in, in the Word of God, what does the Word of God say? I mean, doesn't people go on church to church, um, from you know therapy to therapy, uh, trying to find God somewhere that will heal them? In Jeremiah eight, uh, chapter eight, it's, it talks about you know, they, they, they heal, uh, they feel the the hurt of the daughters of my people slightly. They're saying peace, peace, and there's no peace. So um, you know the this is what's going on. This is a false uh, pathway. Um, people that have been abused this way, they, they, they've got their memory blocked from fear of false six, and means the enemies just thrust them into, um, you know, in a place where this is sorcery, this is witchcraft, this is this is the same stuff we witnessed in, you know, in, in the reading of the Garden of Eden. So, why is this gained such inroads into Christianity today? I mean, we are coming well, to well, I think you just touched on it a little bit. You're talking about people going from church to church and they're looking for this, they're looking for that. And here's the truth. You know, the scriptures talk about people in the, in the last days, especially we see, you know, Second Timothy, uh, uh, Second Timothy uh, four verses three and four talk about uh, people following doctrines of demons, looking for things that'll tickle their ears. Well, you just quoted Jeremiah. That same language is used in Jeremiah. Jeremiah is addressing pastors of his day talking about that they're just tickling the people's ears. In other words, they're telling them something that sounds really good, really great, and 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 this fairy tale world, uh, something that anybody would want to hear. In other words, why has the peace and prosperity gospel uh, and the got the grace gospel uh, caught on today? Why is it why is that the most popular gospel being taught? Well, because it's easy to hear. The real gospel a mixture of grace and truth, John 1, 14, is not so easy to hear. Because yes, while we are covered under grace and while we can only be saved through, we can only be saved by grace, We, the truth of the matter is we still have responsibility in that. What's our responsibility? Go and sin no more. What's our other responsibility? To bear fruit, to bear good fruit, to proclaim the gospel, to advance the gospel. Those things require action on our parts. They require work on our parts. They cause some hurts and heartaches on our parts sometimes. They cause us to have to deal with things that we've never dealt with before. And so the gospel that comes through this is a tickling of the ears. And that's what people are looking for today, is they're looking for an easy way out. They're looking for a magic trick. They're looking for, for some hidden secret revealed information uh, when in fact, all we need to do is just realize the simple gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I, I've been studying the word of God for a long time as you have, and I find no evidence whatsoever found anywhere in the Holy Scriptures of this type of therapy, like theophostics, this kind of ministry given by the Lord or the apostles or the early church. There's no evidence that uh, gives any believer the right to command the, the Holy Spirit or Jesus to speak or appear uh, you know, on, on, on a suggestion here. Um, so it's my 
opinion, my personal opinion, that the, the, the images, the, the voice, um, Jesus or the Holy Spirit that appears to these people are, are evil spirits of occultism. It's divination, uh, it's error, it's counterfeit, it's impersonating a member of the eternal Godhead. I mean, why would the, the enemy do that? I mean, that's the sort of stuff he does. So I, that's what, you know, we're told to try the spirits. I'm sad to see so many young people going for this stuff. Um, we're admonished, you know, that, that Satan, as you said, it comes as an angel of light. Um, that, we, that we shouldn't be ignorant of his devices. Uh, it, it, the Lord tells us you know, about many um, false Christ and false prophets that show great signs and wonders of possibly to deceive the very elect. So, I mean, there's classes now enrolled in, in some churches and certain uh, denominations um, where they teach you how to be a prophet. I went to a meeting one time in, in another state. Um, friend, a minister friend took me to a meeting, with, and, and it was like everybody there had a, a name tag. They're all, all either an apostle or a prophet, you know, and I walk into the room and, and this guy comes up to me trying to figure out who I was and asked me who I was. And I looked at him and I said, well, it's, you know, he said, prophet so-and-so. And I said, well, if you're really a prophet, wouldn't you really know that? Nowhere in my Bible can I find where we are taught to obtain a supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. If I can be taught to obtain that, then why is it a gift? It's a gift because it's given of the Holy Spirit to us as believers. Different gifts distributed to different people. I personally believe based on their personalities, based on their, their physical gifts, uh, based on, I believe some of it is based on their the depth of their relationship with Christ. I have seen gifts in my life develop as my relationship with Christ has grown. I've not gone out and sought them. I've not gone out and asked anybody for training in those gifts. Uh, I, I've not gone out and said, would you lay hands on me and bestow some secret magic power on me? I've not gone out and laid on top of Smith Wigglesworth's grave. Uh, look it up if you don't believe it's true. It's called grave soaking. Um, I think it's called the, grave sucking, isn't it? Yeah. Sucking. Sucking or soaking, you'll see both. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are just that. They are gifts that are given to us as God sees fit. If someone tells you, let me, uh, come here, let me, let me teach you how to speak in tongues. You better run away from that person. If someone says, if you'll do this, this, and this, um, I will teach you how to be a prophet. You need to run away from that person uh, because they can't teach you anything um, other than to invite some, uh, you know, some evil spirit into your life. Uh, that, that, yeah, may give you some supernatural gift that can even mimic the gifts we see in Scripture sometimes. I've seen it happen. Well, I, I recall this, but this young man came and he'd enrolled in one of those churches, that, you know, where they're teaching you how to be a prophet. Um, and the classes was, of course, packed out with, you know, college-aged uh, people. And, and so the people were randomly called to the front of the room. They were lined up um, and, and, and asked to... Uh, um, you know, to give a word of knowledge. Um, and there were some strict rules, you know, whatever they said, it, it had to be in kindness and it had to make the people feel good. So this guy, guy tells, um, he starts, you know, discerning, this is, this is not a God. And so he rebelled in one of those classes and he shared some kind of fabricated word. And he got up there and said this thing, you know, strategizing, you know, he said, someone here is strategizing suicide and, you know, the devil's tormenting you and you'll just raise your hand and uh, we'll pray for you. And to a surprise, somebody's hand went up. Well, to me, that's not such a surprise. But um, so, he, well, you know, praise the Lord. So he, he the leadership shut him down. And, um, and and there was like, I don't know, everything he said, like, there was, he was he was told, you know, you can only say things that make people feel good. You can't talk about suicide and feelings like this. And um, so then the class resumed, you know, um, people, it, it was a form of divination. And uh, he shared with me that uh, uh, it was like, you know, maybe 200 people in the class. And he only saw a couple of people go to minister to the girl that said, uh, you know, she was contemplating suicide. How was that? The rest of them ignored this person that was crying for help. 
Um, there's something weird going on. I, you know, I guess they'd rather go through those uh, fire tunnels and lap uncontrollably yourself. But, uh, you know, there's a kind of loony spirit, you know, that's that's messing around with this stuff. Um, Let me make a point about what you were just saying about, you know, the <laughs> the the rules of prophecy that you can only pr prophesy something, uh, you know, that's peaceful and good and all that. Do you want to know what the Bible says about that? Yes, Jeremiah, yes. Chapter tw Jeremiah chapter 28. These are the words of Jeremiah when he's confronting the false prophet Hananiah, who has just prophesied peace over Jerusalem when Jeremiah is telling him 70 years of captivity by Babylon, 70 years if you don't repent. And, and here's what Jeremiah says. Jeremiah, he says, from early times, the prophet who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster, and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. Verse 9. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prophecy comes true. And if you were to continue reading, what you will see is Hananiah then breaks the yoke off of Jeremiah's neck. And then Jeremiah tells him, he says, this very day you will die. Not, it's not this very day. He tells him within just within a certain time period, he will die. And it happens exactly like Jeremiah said. So. What we just read tells us that the prophets of old never prophesied peace. Read the Bible. That they didn't prophesy peace. Their prophecies were warnings to God's people. They were warnings. Listen, you're getting off into this area of sin. Reel this in. Repent. Make it right. Lest these horrible things happen to you. Nowhere do we see prophecies of, of peace, love, and happiness in the scripture. Jesus himself said... Uh, you know, in this life, there there will be what tribulation. Well, these these are dangerous times indeed, and uh, you know it reminds me that uh, Prophet Elijah. I mean, he, it wasn't like he's going to get with all the, the the prophets of Baal, the Baal worshippers, and like let's all hold hands and 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 pray to the, we all serve the same God, right? He was clear that we don't all serve the same God. There's a distinction here. I mean, a lot of these. School and let's make it clear: you and I we absolutely believe the word of God. We believe the supernatural. We operate in the supernatural gifts. We've absolutely you know, numerous times we've seen miraculous healings. We've seen all kinds of amazing things the Lord's done. Um, but we, you know, when when you've got to go to some school that's going to teach you how to do that, and and they're going to charge you, you know, a hefty fee, whatever it is, you know, uh, three thousand, four thousand, whatever. I mean, it's the thing about it, cha-ching, you know, they're making a profit of it. Hey, it says, freely you've been given, freely give. It tells us in Ephesians 4.11, you know, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. They're all there in the same sense, okay? So we get there. The apostles and the prophets, God didn't stop making them today. But for what reason? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying the body. So we all come into unity of the faith, uh, the knowledge of the Son of, of God, unto perfect man, unto the measure of stature, the fullness of Christ. So we, we shouldn't be, you know, children tossed and uh, fro, carried by every wind of doctrine here. Um, all the, all the, the deceiving, you know, spirits out there trying to get people off the, the main track here. I mean, let's get back to the Great Commission. Yeah. Well, and I'd also make the point, even the script scripture that you just quoted there in Ephesians, people will hang their hat on this scripture and get caught up in, in, in this deal of the fivefold ministry. And, and, and listen, here's the thing. Those five things are clearly listed right there in scripture. But if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, if we go to Romans 12, uh, Peter, uh, and, and I don't remember in one of his epistles, I don't remember his first or second Peter, he addresses spiritual gifts. Nowhere in scripture do we find an exhaustive, an exhaustive list of gifts that says, Here's the gifts. This is what they are. And this is all of them. There's more than five. I'm sorry. There, there's more than five things that go on in the church that holds the church together. You need to read Ephesians. You need to read Romans. You need to read Corinthians, first Corinthians. You need to read Peter's epistles to be able to put that picture together and see what a true picture of spiritual gifts looks like. And, and, and so we can't just get caught up. Well, this is, you know, prophecy is uh that that's more spectacular or or you know the, the thing now you know caught up in speaking in tongues 
and many times we're not even doing that in a biblical manner when we're being, you know, when that's being taught uh, or, or you're being told that. And, and so we just have to be careful. I mean, listen, um, I'm just sitting here thinking I have operated in the gift of tongues and biblical tongues, exactly what we saw happen in the book of Acts chapter two. Um, I, I've been in a foreign country where I did not speak the language. I have prayed over someone. This has happened to me more than once, brother. I have prayed over someone in English because I could not find an interpreter to pray with that person. And later on, that person has come back to me with an interpreter and told me, how did you know what was going on in my life? How did you know what to pray for me? Not only did they understand what I said, I'm praying in English, they speak only Spanish, but God allowed words to flow out of my mouth that applied directly to their life. So in that instance, I was operating in the gift of tongues and prophecy at the same time. I've operated in the gift of deliverance, of, uh, of healing, of teaching, of preaching. But you'll never hear me run around and claim I'm a prophet. I can teach you how to be a prophet. Listen, um, the one thing you may hear me say is that I, I, I believe one of my gifts is teaching. I, I'm, I'm confident that God has given me that gift and will continue to use that gift in me as long as I'm using it for him. But you'll never hear me say, I can teach you how to be a teacher because I can't. No one taught me how to be a teacher. God has grown and developed that gift in me over the years. Uh, and, and that's just how it works. I'm sorry that that we have to walk into the callings that God has given us. And then he gives us those gifts. That's why they are called gifts. And he develops us those gifts within us. Again, my opinion based on our personalities, our physical gifts that he's given us, um, and, and, and our obedience to him. But, you know, it occurs to me, again, people want to operate in these gifts, and, and yet most of the church has never led one person into salvation. I mean, if you really want to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, if you get the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and the nine fruits of the Spirit together, I mean, that's going to be amazing. Brilliant. But, you know, think of it. Jesus said, all uh, power is given unto me in heaven and earth. That leaves nothing for anyone else. The devil, anyone. Except that Jesus then tells us, you know, behold, I give unto you power over all the works of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. He tells us, you know, therefore go teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy uh, Spirit, um, observing to do whatsoever I've commanded you. And I'm with you always to the end of the world. So he's not, you know, it's not a suggestion, it's a commandment um, from our commander in chief, the, the Lord himself. We ought to have drank enough living water at this point to, to, to share this, this amazing um, salvation message with everyone. Um, it's not just about getting to heaven one day, it's about life here as well. You know, giving you a more abundant life now um, tells us that. You know, we should be ready to give an answer to anybody to ask us for the hope that's within us. So this, this whole process of sanctification, where we separate from worldly things and worldly ways, and we're transformed in our hearts for sacred purposes. And by doing so, then the, the Lord can use you. I, I had a conversation with somebody not that long ago about, like, how do you, how do you get to that point? You know, like a Smith Wigglesworth. How do you, well, he, he was in the Word. Continually, that's how you get to that point. And God will decide how to use you as His as His will. I mean, He decides, not you. So I mean, I, I tell people I I couldn't heal a butterfly with a broken wing except God decides to do it through me. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right, brother. And, and I think that's very important for us to remember because things have gotten so perverted and distorted. Uh, you know, within the church, we've taken these gifts. Uh, you know, all of them, brother, a prophecy. Listen, if you look up that word in the Greek, uh, pro we see in English prophecy, the Greek word is prophetia. The, the first definition of that word and the most accurate is an interpretation of things already revealed. It's an interpretation of scripture, of prophetic scriptures. That's what the most accurate definition of the word is in the original Greek language. Now, listen. I believe in prophecy as far as forth telling because I've seen it happen. It's happened in my own life. But in other words, prophecy, we shouldn't just be running around thinking, well, I'm going to tell the future. No, that's something that we're told to stay away from. That's sorcery and divination and, 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 and things like that. 
Um, you know, like I said, I mean, the most accurate definition of that word is an interpretation of prophetic scriptures. And, and, and so just, things have gotten so distorted. Prophecy, tongues, healing, uh, deliverance, they, they've all gotten so distorted by the enemy. That's what he's a master of, is manipulation and, 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 and deceiving, you know, deception. And so that's what he's done. He's deceived the church and he's got these two camps set up when it comes down to these things of, well, either it has to be of, to this extreme uh, where uh, we're, we're going to uh, lay hands on you and heal you or else you have sin in your life. There's something wrong with you or it's this extreme over here of, well, that gift doesn't exist anymore. Well, neither one of those things are true. Neither one of those things are biblical. Neither one of those things can you show me that definition in Scripture. Again, I remind everyone, uh, scientific secular research is showing you know, that, that, uh, that 98% of the stuff that we're dealing with, mental, physical, um, behavioral illnesses, uh, begin in your thought life. So again, this is why we, we've, I mean, the Lord said that you heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, uh, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely been given, freely received. So we, we have choices. We're, we're not a robot. The, the transhumanists haven't won yet. They haven't been able to force microchips into everyone's brain yet. Um, so let us, you know, pursue the word of God. Uh, the Lord says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me. So if you're here to understand that and, and follow the Lord, um, he designed us in such an amazing way. Um, I mean, the DNA is the most complex molecule in the universe, or multi-universes, for whatever position you're taking. But I mean, the actual chances of DNA involving uh, by chance, are, in fact, are less than zero. So, I mean, I, for all those, um, you know, if you get an opportunity with an atheist, share that with them. Um, <laughs> I, I suppose we're about out of time again for this program, so we probably ought to wind it down. Um, we are fearfully, wonderfully made, and God wants to bless you, and um, nothing's impossible with the Lord. Um, if you haven't made your peace with God, this would be a good time to come together and, and seek the Lord with all your mind, body, spirit, soul. Just understand who He is and that he loves you, he's got a good plan for your life, and maybe the plan that you've been using presently, you, you see it's flawed, it's not working out so well. Why don't you give the Lord a chance to, to work in your life? Pastor Brandon, would you be so kind to pray with everyone? I will, brother. Let me just say this in closing before I pray that um, I just want to be very clear because we've touched on some, on some hot-button issues here tonight. Um, in no way, shape, or form have, have I, and I'm going to speak for you or you sought to attack a single person um, or, or, or a single uh, uh, church, but we are called to expose things and, and, and to bring things into the light. It's what the word tells us to do. So I just want to be clear about that. I don't want anybody to have a bad taste in their mouth by anything that's been said here tonight. We're just trying to expose the truth of God's word and how Satan has crept into the church and perverted uh, things in today's world. So let me lead us in prayer, brother. Oh, Father, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we thank you that you are truth. We thank you, Lord, for the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus, your son. We thank you for the opportunity to speak truth tonight, to speak in freedom. I pray that everything that has been spoken here has been total truth, that it has been delivered from your throne, Lord. If there's anything that's been said here tonight that's been untruth or is not honoring to you, I just pray that you will you will bring that to the light so that we can handle it and address it and make that right immediately. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to do this tonight, Lord. We just pray right now for, for one who's watched this program and and, and maybe they've been involved in things that we've been talking about here tonight and they've, they've been convicted of it. Lord, we just pray right now that they would lay that conviction before you, that they would confess of the things they've been involved in, repent of, of getting involved in, in those ungodly things, Lord. And that even right this moment that they would just begin to feel your supernatural peace, Lord, flow into their life. And they would begin to feel your healing power that can only come through Jesus in a true relationship with your son. Father, I pray for the one that may be listening tonight that has never had a relationship with you. Lord, that they would just, uh, even right now in this moment, that they would begin repenting of their sins. Lord, they would be begin confessing their sins before you, acknowledging that they are a sinner. Lord, acknowledging that they cannot do it without your strength and your power. 
and that they would do what your word says is necessary, that they would call on that name of Jesus, that they would confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And then through that, that you would place that belief in their heart that can only come from you, that you have raised him from the dead, that we serve a living God, a risen Savior, that, that, that we, don't, we don't serve someone laying in the ground where we can go and visit their bones in a grave. Lord, we serve a risen Savior who is alive and, and active and, 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 is, and is seeking to change our lives every single day. Father, I pray that they would just call out on that name of Jesus right now. And that they would feel the presence of your Holy Spirit in, in the room or the car or where, wherever they may be. And that presence of that Holy Spirit would begin to flood into their lives and forever change who they are. We love you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We just praise your holy name. Oh, Lord, that nothing's impossible with you. We just thank you, Lord, for reaching out to everyone that needs to be uh, connected with you right now, that you would just connect with them in, in the most extraordinary, intimate ways and surround them in your extravagant love. And we just thank you, Father God, for healing the truth to be released from heaven now and um, touch anybody that needs to be healed, that you provided healing and salvation. We just thank you for doing uh, above and beyond exceedingly more than we can even hope or ask for. In the almighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Messiah Yeshua, amen. We'll see you all next time for another spiritual encounter here, there, or in the air. Who filled the world with music without melodies? Confused the nations with envy and jealousies.
welcome to another adventure with Spiritual Encounters. We are here to help represent God's work, not ours. Besides the insightful biblical teachings shared by our host, Pastor Casper, we are also very blessed to be able to bring you outstanding interviews with some of the most sought after deep thinkers and voices in Christendom today, helping to make a difference in this world for Christ's sake. We want to keep it that way, to be truly effective in internal matters, truly demands on prayer and being led of the Holy Spirit. If you, like us, long to see the Lord Jesus, Yoshua, glorified here through spiritual encounters, we invite you to join the prayer team. There is nothing more exciting than participating in intercessory prayer with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are a totally faith-based ministry, and so please give and support spiritual encounters as you are led. Truly, Grace and Radio have a lot in common. Grace is free to us, but cost Christ an untold price, we may never fully understand this side of heaven. Radio is also free, too. It costs nothing to turn on your dial or stream audio, but it costs us a lot to stay on the air. Spiritual Encounters is almost entirely listener-supported, a privilege, but rare things in these days of big church radio corporations. We've carefully trimmed our budgets to all but wartime essentials, but operating costs are a fact of life. If you've been blessed through our programme, here are some ways you can give back as the Holy Spirit leads. Consider becoming an underwriter by contacting us or simply go to the upper room, fellowship.org, and scroll down on the main page to donate. Production of the Upper Room Fellowship and Casper McLeod Ministries. Visit us at theupperroomfellowship.org. This program is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. The intro and outro music is performed by Casper McLeod from his album Communion, available at theupperroomfellowship.org. In my face, since I learned to pray.